In these examples, we'll take a look at verifying the conditions to see if it's appropriate to estimate a mean or if we have to estimate a median, and then apply some interpretations to the intervals that we end up with. So in our first example, uh, we have a table that provides the population growth rate for the United States and Mexico each year. Can we conclude that on average, population growth rates in the United States and Mexico are equal? We want to use a confidence level of 90%. Now keep in mind, first thing we want to see is if we can estimate a mean. So we need to verify the conditions are met for the first sample for the US and for the second sample, Mexico. Both our sample uh, sizes are too small to meet the sample size requirement. So we need to use StatCrunch to look at QQ plots and uh, assess normality. So with both data sets already entered, I can construct a QQ, a QQ plot. And if I hold control and click to select both of those variables at the same time, then I can add my correlation statistic. So we're going to be able to output both graphs at the same time, but we'll only see one at a time. So this first correlation, 0.911, is for our first data set, var1, and it's listed right here, just to kind of give you that key in case you aren't sure which graph you're looking at. So we're looking at the first variable, and then if I hit this arrow, it'll flip me to my second graph. Now I'm looking at var2, and I have my correlation statistic. In this case, both data sets have a sample size of seven, so we can also calculate the critical value that we need, which in this case is 0.897779. So the QQ plot for the United States has a correlation statistic of 0 0.911. The QQ plot for Mexico has a correlation statistic of 0 0.964. Both of these values are greater than 0 0.897779, which is the critical value for the QQ plot, or for both of the QQ plots. This means our sample data comes from, let's be a little more specific, this means both our sample data sets come from normally distributed populations, and we can estimate means. So now what we want to do is construct a 90% confidence interval estimate. So the 90% confidence interval estimate for mu1 minus mu2 is and now we need to actually construct that estimate. So flipping back to StatCrunch, we'll select stat, still t stats since we're estimating a mean, and in this case, two sample with data. So we'll select the values in our first column, select the values in our second column, and then a very important step that for now we'll just have to know to do every single time is to uncheck this option to pool variances. There are additional conditions that have to be verified that we're not going to go into right now. So for our purposes, you just need to know that that box should always be unchecked. And then we want to set our confidence level to be 0 0.9. So we can click compute and generate our lower and upper limit. So our lower limit is negative 0 0.0043, and our upper limit is negative 0 0.0030. In this case, all values in our interval are less than 0, implying mu1 is less than mu2. So what that means is we can't support the claim. In this case, the claim is that the average population growth rate in the United States and Mexico are the same.
So we can't conclude that the average growth rates in these two countries are the same. Based off our confidence interval estimate, all of the values are negative, meaning mu1 minus mu2 is something less than zero, or that mu1 is less than mu2. So based off the sample data, we can't conclude that the average growth rates are the same. In example two, we have some data on the number of UFO sightings per month um, reported to this online database in 2012 and 2002. Does this data suggest that on average, people are now reporting more ghost sightings than they were in the last decade? And then again, use a confidence level of 90%. So again, our sample sizes are too small, less than 25. So we'll construct two QQ plots and include these correlation statistics. So in this case, we had a correlation of 0.978 and 0.972. We have a sample size of 12 in each case. So both QQ plots are gonna have the same critical value. In this case, 0.927514. So the QQ plot for 2012 is 0 0.976 for 2012 has a correlation statistic of 0 0.976. The QQ plot for 2002 has a correlation statistic of 0 0.973. Both of these values are greater than 0 0.927514, which is the critical value for each QQ plot. This means both sample values, or both sample sets, come from normally distributed populations. And we can estimate means. So the 90% confidence interval estimate for mu1 minus mu2 is, and we need to switch back to StatCrunch to generate these results. So again, clicking on stat, tstats to sample with data. We'll select our two data sets, making sure to uncheck that pool variances option. Select a confidence interval, which in this case we want to be 90%, and click Compute. So again, we get our lower limit and our upper limit. So our lower limit is 145.60, and our upper limit is 530.73. All values in our confidence interval are greater than zero, implying mu1 is greater than mu2. So if we're concluding that mu1 is greater than mu2, in this case, mu1 related to the first data set we used, which was 2012. So on average, we're saying there are more ghost, uh, UFO sightings being posted now than there were a decade ago. So yes, this data suggests that on average, people are now reporting more ghost sightings than they were a decade ago. And again, that conclusion is coming down to looking at our confidence interval. Since all the values are positive, we know that mu1 needs to be larger than mu2. So then we need to keep track of which data set is, mu, is related to mu1, which is related to mu2. We could come up with different results if we input the information in a different order. But the way I input this, 2012 was my first data set, 2002 was my second data set. So I have to conclude that 
the average for more recent years is larger than the average a decade ago.